Palestinians have a saying, the way to humiliate a nation is by humiliating its leader. It's a saying the Israelis must have heard. They've kept President Yasser Arafat captive for the past 18 months and recently threatened to assassinate or expel him. I've come to Ramallah to find out how Arafat's coping with his confinement and how Palestinians feel about the threats to the president they call Abu Ammar. قضية حصار أبو عمار أو بعد أبو عمار أبو عمار لو أبعدوا ولا شو شو ما صار في ضل أبو عمار هو القائد للدول الفلسطينية مش راح يجي حد تاني يقود يقود الفلسطينيين ولا حد بيقدر يقود الفلسطينيين إلا أبو عمار شخص ضحى بكل شيء من أجل فلسطين وعودة على فلسطين Arafat's compound isn't far from the center of town. He's been stuck here ever since the Israeli army reoccupied much of the West Bank following the suicide bombing in April last year. Sweet, <laughs> 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 In some ways, Arafat's incarceration is an accident. He usually lives in Gaza, but happened to be visiting his Ramallah headquarters when the tanks rolled into cities across the West Bank. Now it's the site of what might become Arafat's last stand. The last time I was here was 1996, when I was training Palestinian journalists for the United Nations. Now some of my former students are based here as reporters. <laughs> Ahmed Zaki works for Oman Television and Majid Saeed is a reporter for Abu Dhabi TV. Alhamdulillah. 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 أكثر من هيك يعني بحيث إنه ما حدا يدخل على المقاطعة يقطع الهواتف والاتصالات والزيارات إلو. Over the past 18 months, Arafat's compound has come under siege three times. Most recently, every building was destroyed except for the one housing the president. 
Although much has since been rebuilt, the compound is still piled high with rubble, along with the twisted wrecks of cars smashed by Israeli tanks. I've arrived at a critical time for the Palestinian government. Ahmed Kureya, better known as Abu Allah, is about to become the new prime minister. He's been appointed by Arafat to replace Abu Mazen, who resigned a few weeks ago over what was reported to be a power struggle with the president. <laughs> Abu Allah has arrived to discuss plans for the new cabinet, but has nothing to say to the assembled media. All the major news agencies and Middle Eastern radio and television stations have a presence here. Every morning at 10, they receive a briefing on the day's events. Most are Palestinian while a few, like me, have come from overseas in the hope of getting an interview with Arafat. Just we have to stay. If we have anything for you, we'll call you. We'll be in touch by phone. If there is anything, we'll be inside. But, but we have a flight tomorrow to Poland. I, we, I, I'm sorry to tell you that sometimes the people come from uh, uh -huh. Greek, from Australia, and until now we can't range because we don't have today. time. We'll wait here. See, and for nothing, just if you are waiting here, you waste your time, you can do something else until we find time ah, for you, until we find... Way, we'll be... <laughs> I've been assured that with well-connected local journalists as friends, I stand a good chance of getting some time with the president. We walked together about 20 minutes. Mohamed Saadi is a Reuters journalist and an old friend. He's agreed to introduce me to Arafat's senior advisor, Nabil Abu Radena. By my third day, the soldiers know who I am and I'm ushered through the gate. <laughs> Today, a large crowd of locals has arrived at the compound to show solidarity with Arafat. threatened to assassinate or expel Arafat, crowds like this have flocked to the compound.
Over the years, Arafat has been heavily criticised by many Palestinians for ruling like a dictator and for promising far more than he's ever been able to deliver. any other Palestinian leader, Arafat embodies his people's struggle. And when he's threatened, Palestinians take it personally. It's often said that Arafat is at his best in times of crisis. In 1982, just after Israel invaded Lebanon, Arafat still appeared triumphant as he and his soldiers were escorted out of Beirut. Last year, with his compound under siege for 35 days and the water and electricity cut off, he once again showed the qualities that inspire devotion in those around him. الرئيس هذا صرفات عمره حاليا 74 سنة والعمر لك قدام إن شاء الله يعني بس فضي يعني قبل ثاني كان 70 سنة بس بتحسين إنه شاب بالعشرين من عمره يعني عم بيحمل الكلاشين تبعه المميز الرشاش اللي معه من زمان لليوم الرشاش القصير فتح زرار الجوكي تبعه هيك بمر على الشباب بسلم عليهم بالإيد واحد واحد. Ali Sawafta is a press secretary at the compound. Arafat's plight outraged much of the international community. The US Secretary of State, Colin Powell, made a personal visit to the beleaguered president. إجا باول الشيء الغريب جدا يعني وزير خارجية دولة عظمى مثل أمريكا بيصل لمقر الرئيس ياسر عرفات والمقر محاصر هذا الشيء بحد ذاته رسالة كان رسالة إنه يعني وزير خارجية دولة عظمى بيجي على الرئيس عرفات والجيش الإسرائيلي بيوصله الدبابة بتوصله للدرج لمدخل الدرج يعني These days, the Palestinian president receives few high-profile visitors, and none from Washington. Recently, George Bush urged Palestinians to take Iraq's example and change their leader. But Arafat is not without friends. Excuse me, sir. What do you think of the threats against the President Arafat? Excuse me, sir. Rob Hawke was in the region to attend birthday celebrations for former Israeli Prime Minister Shimon Peres. He wasn't comfortable explaining his reasons for dropping in on Arafat. Okay, thank you. We have to thank His Excellency for this visit. And uh, also we have to thank him from our hearts for what he is doing to protect the peace of the river, which we had started and you are continuing through the roadmap. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, by definition, uh, I'm not going to talk about the details of our discussion. That's something between President Arafat and myself. But I think we can say, Mr. President, that we have discussed some thoughts that I have about how we may be able to advance the process of peace and help to create not just a state of Palestine, but uh, a vibrant economy in which the people of Palestine are going to have jobs, economic growth, uh, employment um, and education. These are the sorts of things that we all want for the people of Palestine. And I hope together, uh, Mr. President, that we may be able to advance that cause. Thank you again.
Unfortunately, Arafat has more pressing concerns than economic growth and employment. Today, the central committee of Arafat's party, Fatah, is meeting to decide the makeup of the new cabinet. The media isn't welcome at the compound today, but that hasn't stopped a local band from putting on a show. Ahmed Saadi, my friend from Reuters, is helping me work on questions for my interview with Arafat. Yesterday, I handed him some sample questions, but I've been told to change them. Recently, they changed their uh, their plans vis-à-vis -vis, uh, interviewing Arafat, and now they're asking for having the questions beforehand, before you do the interview. This happened, obviously, after a number of journalists, uh, basically, uh, Arafat got angry with them because they did ask him uh, what he considered as embarrassing questions for him and that they're taking, basically, the Israeli view and the American view. Yet, they're scrutinizing questions which are really harmless and neutral. Mm -hmm. And it's like they're doing themselves a disservice. Um, well, um, this is Arafat, you know. He can't, he can't change. You know, one of his senior, uh, from the close circle of Arafat, once told me, I really bought him two suits, two new suits, just to change. He refused to, to put them on. He does not love change. Tonight, the PLO Executive Committee is meeting to discuss the formation of Prime Minister Abu Allah's new cabinet. No photos for us? As always, photographers and cameramen clamor for a brief photo opportunity inside. According to Palestinian journalists, Arafat wants to crack down on militant groups immediately and he's insisting on an emergency cabinet to do this. But Prime Minister-elect Abu Allah is more cautious. He doesn't want to tackle the militants without a mandate from the Legislative Council. The next day, I receive a phone call from the compound telling me Arafat will finally have some time for my interview in the evening. It's a bit of a shock to see an ambulance disappear into the compound. For the first time since my arrival, the soldiers seem tense. Okay. It doesn't take long for the word to spread that the president isn't well. Soon we're joined by other journalists anxious for news from inside the compound. The next day, I'm told that the normal schedule at the compound has been suspended. There will be no opportunity to film the president, let alone interview him. Rumours are flying that Arafat is very sick. Two days later, at least some of the mystery is solved. Arafat has indeed been ill, though a delegation of medical specialists from Jordan has now pronounced him well. Well, <laughs> 
وبالمناسبة هذه لما وقعت بي الطيارة أخويا الدكتور يوسف السغسوس هو اللي عالجني لما وقعت الطيارة في فليبيا تذكروها هو اللي عالجني والله وبإشراف جلالة المرحوم ملك حسين والله لا أنس لا ينسى هذا لا ينسى بارك الله فيك تحملني الدكتور ما فيش لما اكح لازم اروح له والشيء الاخر الحقيقه اللي يعني دهشنا في كل الفريق انه الصحه العاليه والمعنويات العاليه في الظروف السيئه البيئيه التي يعيش فيها سياده الرئيس ورفاقه فما في شك انه يعني انسان عظيم جدا نتمنى له كل الخير وكل التوفيق شكرا ومعا وسويا حتى القدس ان شاء الله ان شاء الله باذن الله يا سيدي The assurances of Arafat's doctors aren't enough to scotch rumors already circulating that the president has been poisoned. For almost a week, Arafat is too unwell to appear in public again. After decades of struggle, in frail health, and with a threat of assassination hanging over him, the world can only wonder how much life there is left in the Palestinian leader.